Welcome back to our channel, Hume's Little Homestead. Yesterday, I harvested, let me see if I can remember how to say it, it's B-U-L-B-I-S, bulbis, anyway, they're very cool, <laughs> I've been watching our lily plants, so we had three, I believe they're stargazer tiger lily plants. I can go back and look on that information. And they had these really neat little, they looked almost like, they didn't really look like seed pods. They almost looked like beetles on the plant. And I was like, what's on the plant? And then I watched them and they, I noticed that they were on like in between the leaves of the plant. Let me go outside and show you the plant so I can just show you. <laughs> Others who have gardened probably already know what these look like and what I'm talking about, and so I probably look silly, but it was just the most exciting discovery for me because I had never seen them. Oh, hello, duckies. Are you going to come say hi? So, let me show you the plant that I got these little bulbous from. I think that's how you say it. If I'm saying it wrong, just let me know. I wasn't exactly sure how to say it. So I got the flower garden we did yesterday. Ryan helped me a lot with that. These are, sorry about the pig. We also got rabbit poo down in here. Okay, so these are the plants that they came off of. All right, and they had, oh, there's one still on there. See that little black thing? It had them all over in between each of the leaves and I researched it and it will grow a whole new plant. So let me go inside and show you. So they were all in between, in between these leaves. Okay, and I just gently plucked them off like I did that one. I'm so glad there was one left on there. And I put them in a bowl. And they all looked like this yesterday. Now, what I read is that each one of these will form a new lily plant. So that was really exciting. And I put them all in this little green bowl. This green bowl was outside, and I just grabbed it, so that's why it's dirty. Anyway, I have to show you the coolest thing happened this morning. Let me see if I can get one out carefully. A big one, this one right here. This morning, I noticed on this big one, I noticed some growth. Do you see that tiny little... It looks like a root almost. So I decided to spray them with water real quick because I wanted to plant them as soon as I got home from dropping the kids off at school. And I noticed that little root, so I sprayed some water. And a whole bunch of them sprouted those tiny little roots. So I'm really excited about this. And I'm going to spread them over the top of some soil right now and plant them. And I think I'll do an experiment and put some in the soil and some just laying on top of the soil and see which ones grow best. So I had no idea that lilies produce seeds like this. I thought you had to divide the, I thought they had to produce more bulbs. I didn't know that they just produce little seed pods. So this is really interesting to me. I will put in the clip from yesterday of me finding them. I had found them, I had seen them growing on the plant, I just wasn't exactly sure what they were, so I left them alone. And lo and behold, 
their little seeds. And look how fast they germinate. Like, that's so crazy. So last night I was reading and reading all how I can get them to sprout and all this. And I didn't think that they would grow so quickly. And this morning I put a little water on them and boom, they have some growth. So pretty amazing. So if I hadn't plucked them off, naturally they would have fallen off of the plant and they they would have fallen to the ground and grown next to the plant. So this way I can put them where I want them. I'm going to plant them inside so that I can watch them grow because I think it's so fascinating and it's the first time I've ever seen this. So anyway, let's get some soil and get these little guys in some dirt so we can plant them real quick because it looks like they're needing to be planted quickly. All right, so this is a strange angle, but I don't know. It works. So I've got my bulbous. I'm going to put the word on the screen so you can decide for yourself if I'm saying that correctly. I want to count them and see how many there are. And I'm not sure, like there's a really tiny one right here. Let's see. This one's super tiny. Oh, I could see a root on it too. So this one's like the tiniest one, but it looks like it's going to grow one. So anyway, I'm going to put it back in there. And I'm going to use... <laughs> An old salad container and I like these because I can put the lid on and it'll keep in the humidity so I'm just gonna put I should I should put holes in this but I'm not going to so I'm just gonna be careful not to overwater that's how I will deal with that so uh, but drainage is important oh, a little bug a little bug in this room this is my plant room so I'm just gonna fill it with dirt and because I'm not drilling holes I'm gonna make sure and or poking holes I mean you don't have to it's very thin plastic I don't need to like drill through it anyway um, I am going to just fill it with dirt and not and be careful not to overwater these plants because the thing about it is when I have holes in things I water and then water is spilling everywhere so I'm just gonna leave it without holes this time I'm just going to use some potting mix. What I read was that you might want to use, um, I have plants down in here. <laughs> I got kind of sad about winter, so I started planting a whole bunch of stuff in here, <laughs> and I ran out of space, so I just had these pots down in the, the potting mix bag. <laughs> Anyway, there was only three. It was fine. See, I just had them tucked down in the bag so that I could water them. And like I'm saying, so that when I water it and the water got on my floor, I just watered them in the bag. Okay. So I'm just going to fill up this container with some potting soil. So I've got it about an inch from the top, the soil level. Now we're gonna get our little bulbils or bulbous. I don't really know how to say it. Let me move this lemon balm. <laughs> um, I'm gonna grab them and I'm going to, let me grab this big one here that I showed you earlier. I think, so for half of them, I'm going to just lay them on top of the soil because that's how they would fall in nature. They would just fall from the plant onto the soil like that. 
So for this half, I'm going to let them be on top of the soil and let them do their thing. And for this half, I'm going to make some little holes and plant them in the holes. So I think I can do like three across and maybe eight. I guess three wide and eight across. <laughs> I don't know, there's a whole bunch in there, so I'll just see how many I can fit in this little pot. Well, it's not really a pot. In this plastic container that I recycled. left. I'll find something to do with those five. Don't you worry. For the last five, I'm just going to put them in a Ziploc baggie and paper towel. Spray the paper towel so it's wet. Not wet, but moist. So, just going to do that. I'm going to spray it. it kind of damp. Okay. And I am going to put these right on the paper towel. I don't know if you can see. And we'll have another way to watch these grow. Something I was curious about and I was reading and wondering if they needed to have a cold stratification period. Because some plants that drop their seeds need the seed to have a cold period for like six weeks and so for those plants I've, I've done this with the trumpet vine the hummingbird vine that I started from seed I put the trumpet vine seeds in the fridge for six weeks and then pull them out and I did this with marshmallow as well and lavender seeds they benefit from a cold stratification period from six to eight weeks and the peach the peach tree seeds that we planted outside those had eight weeks and they start sprouting in the cold because that's what they would do in nature. And so I was trying to Google this and it said some needed some, some types of lilies need it and some types don't. And I just was like, and then it had all these really long names and I am like, I don't know what kind of lily I planted. <laughs> like I know that it, I think that it was called stargazer, but I don't know its scientific name. So I was 
I was really happy to see these tiny little roots and root sprouts because that means because it's warm. It's probably like 70 in my house. I don't know. It's pretty chilly today. I bet it's like 65 in my house today. I don't like the cold weather and it's getting cold and dark and dreary. Anyway, when I had seen that they had sprouted without being in the fridge like conditions, they just sprouted in my warm indoors. Uh, I am thinking that this type of lily that I have does not need that cold stratification. So I think we're good to go. So all I'm going to do is spray it with water. And I'm really interested to see how the seeds do on this side that were just dropped, just like nature drops its seed and it's on top of the ground compared to the seeds that I dug just a small hole. Because it said you could do it both ways on the little article that I was reading. I, I read... I read about I read three different articles about this and all articles agreed you can plant them like peas and so it says you can plant them like peas which is funny um, and just make a little row and plant them in a row outside and they would be just fine or you can start them inside and so there were a couple different ways you could start them so I'm just curious because the plant drops the seed and it would just be laying on top of the ground and I mean it would probably get covered with snow and that kind of stuff but I don't think it would get covered very deeply so that's why I'm going to try this and see how it goes and where's my spray bottle last thing I need to do is spray it spray it with water and water it so I'm going to go ahead and water it really generously. I actually think I'm going to use some water in this water bottle too because the soil I used is really really dry. I don't know why. It's soil I just bought at one of the big box stores and it's on the dry side, which last time it wasn't. So I got the same exact kind I bought last time, but this one is just a little different. I don't know. Anyway. But I don't want to overwater it, like I said, because I don't have drainage holes in here. But the top needs to be very, very moist. And then I'll just pop this lid on it. Where'd it go? Right there. I'm gonna pop the lid on it like this and that'll keep the humidity in. And I'm excited. I'm excited to see this project. It's gonna be pretty cool. I have something else to show you while we are here. I didn't film starting these, but I was at the dollar store and these are on the shelf. <laughs> and I was like, ooh, I want to try growing microgreens, but I didn't want to buy all that fancy equipment. And so I had a Tupperware, and I just put a layer of paper towel underneath and a layer of paper towel over and sprayed them. And I peeked in today, and there's a whole bunch of little sprouts. So I'm really excited about that, to see those sprouts going. Ah! So I can hold that up. For you so hopefully soon I will have some more progress to show on this this is microgreens mild mix it was a dollar I thought what the heck I'm gonna give it a try and like I said I didn't want to buy any of those fancy things so I just set the lid on loosely I didn't didn't click it down or anything and I just said nobody touch this it's my experiment and it's been sitting in my kitchen so there's some more experiments for you that I'm doing. And the last thing I'm going to do on this video is I'm going to go outside and cut some of my oregano branches. I found out that oregano should overwinter just fine. So I'm not going to do anything to that plant except I am going to take three, two or three branches and put them in some water and see if I can get them to root just so I don't have to start it all the way from seed all the way again in the springtime. If for some reason the plant doesn't last for the winter, which might not, but it might, it might be just fine. So let's go out in the chilly weather and hear the screaming pig. The pig is mad because I'm, tomorrow the pig is five weeks old. So tomorrow the pig 
is getting downsized to two bottles a day. And it's kind of like doing like a little hunger strike. It doesn't want to eat the pellets I bought it, but I'm just like, you got to eat the pellets. <laughs> Don't have anything else for you. So yeah, I'll keep you updated on that tomorrow. I will be moving it down to two bottles a day. So it had a bottle this morning right when I took it out of its warm little coop and put it in its pen. And that's another thing. It's getting older, so it's going to have to start getting acclimated and the weather is not too... It's pretty rainy today, so it's not really happy with the weather, but I've been checking on it. It's been fine. Um, it's just not very comfortable. And it's waiting for its bottle that I will give it at noon, which tomorrow I'm cutting out the noon bottle, so... Gotta learn to eat. <laughs> Don't know what to tell it. I'm just like, I'm sorry, pig. I can't keep buying you formula forever, so you're gonna have to get weaned. And it's like worse than a toddler, like way harder than a toddler. <laughs> but at least it'll be a much shorter period than raising a toddler. Okay, let's go out and get some oregano. <laughs> Here's something else pretty cool. Look at this chamomile. It's like coming back up at the bottom. I'm thinking maybe I'll cut all this away. I was hoping that it would drop seed, which I think it is, because I really want this corner to just be chamomile. Look at all this. I wonder if this is chamomile too. Look at all these little tiny seedlings. This is very interesting. I will keep you updated. Let me smell it. Maybe it'll smell like chamomile. I can't tell. And I can't remember what the chamomile looked like when it first sprouted. But some exciting things going on out here. Just letting nature do its thing. I'm going to go back inside. It's raining, which I'm so happy for. It's like magical out here when it rains. That poor pig. It's not happy. Look at the honeysuckle. It's really, really grown. Whew, now that I'm all wet. <laughs> um, that oregano plant is actually looking really, really good. So I think it's going to be just fine over the winter. But I grabbed just two branches. It's actually looking much healthier now that we cut down the rest of the garden. And it probably isn't competing as much for sunlight and nutrients and it's just doing better if there's mud on it <laughs> so all I'm going to do is I'm going to take off these smaller branches and leaves I'm going to leave the top leaves for photosynthesis but I'm going to strip quite a few of the leaves off see and what this will do it'll make sure that those leaves aren't rotting in the water that I'm going to be putting it in right here. These are just old baby food jars. And I'm going to place it in. And I'm going to do the same thing to the other one. Probably should have cut it a little longer. I just didn't want to damage the plant because it looked so healthy and happy. Probably won't hurt it to do a little trimming anyway. Alright. There's the second one. And I'll put it in there. And I'll just put this on my kitchen counter. I have a lavender um, branch like this, seeing if it will root. I don't think it's going to. It's starting to look kind of bad. I also have a hummingbird vine branch that I was seeing if I could get it to propagate as well. But, not sure. You just never know with these things. Sometimes they rot and don't turn out. Sometimes you get two new plants because you were willing to experiment. Well... That does it for today's video. I hope that you're all having a wonderful day. Tomorrow I will be giving a pregnancy update on our current pregnancy. So be 13 weeks and I'm feeling really happy about that. Getting really close to the second trimester and feeling pretty good. So anyway, I'll talk more about that tomorrow. And thanks for watching. And 
I find that when it starts getting cold, I start planting planting things randomly. Like, okay, it's getting cold. Like I got out lettuces and started planting lettuce in, in pots in here. And like, of course I could plant the lettuce outside, but I just didn't want to have to go outside. <laughs> I just really don't like winter. Fall and winter are not my seasons. I just feel like I need to be like a bear and hibernate or something. So that's how I feel in the winter. But anyway, I start planting things inside so that I can have a little bit of summer inside, I think is, is why I, I still have so many plants going on inside my house. So anyway, thanks so much for watching today. If you've already subscribed, we appreciate it. We are so grateful for your love and support and we are just grateful for you. Thanks for subscribing. And I'm also grateful for all the tips that have been given and like through YouTube and the Facebook page, like I'm learning so much and I'm so grateful for you because without you, I wouldn't be learning as much. I wouldn't be pushing myself. And so I'm just so grateful. So I'm grateful for that. If you have not yet subscribed, we would invite you to please do so and hit the little alarm button. So